Today, on Friday the 13th, we are going to honor the 30th anniversary of the release of The Nightmare Before Christmas by making Sally's Fog Juice. The things we need to create Sally's Fog Juice is one glass bottle, and I'm using a recycled growler. I felt like the shape of it was perfect for this, but you could use any type of glass jug, terracotta jug, anything you could find that you think would be the right shape. We're going to use some baking soda, as well as an assortment of acrylic paints. I have some standard and metallic. We're going to use some permanent black markers, including a Sharpie. You're going to need some washi tape, as well as scissors. I have an assortment of foam brushes and regular brushes. I have a cork from my stash of extra corks that fits the top of this. You'll need a pencil as well as something to mix your paint in. And finally, we will need our design printed on regular paper, and the link for this is in the description down below. Let's get started. Would you like a chance to win a monthly potion bottle? Then consider supporting me over on Patreon. All of my patrons have a chance to win a monthly potion bottle. Patreon at your thing? No worries. You can become a member here on YouTube, and you'll be able to unlock exclusive icons and emojis to use in the comment section. Link is in the description down below. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is take our glass bottle. So again, this is a growler. This is a recycled one um, from some hard cider. If you ever get a chance to go to Blake's Hard Cider in Armada, I highly recommend it. Very good hard cider, really good food. But um, we're gonna reuse this bottle today because I feel like, again, it's a similar size to what Sally has in the movie. And I think it'll be an easy one for us to transform. Plus, I always like upcycling when I can. So we're gonna take our container. I'm sure you all have seen the viral terracotta pumpkin dupes that are the replica of the Pottery Barn ones. We're gonna use a similar method to add some texture to our base paint. So we're gonna add a little bit of our baking soda. Now, I did get one acrylic paint here that actually has texture in it. So we're gonna use a combination of this one as well as some of the baking soda because I think it'll be a finer texture than what's in here. So between the two, we should get a good mix to kind of cover up this design, but it'll also add some nice texture so it doesn't just feel like a glass bottle. So the first thing we're gonna do is paint our base coat. So again, I'm gonna take some of this textured paint. And this one's a little peachier than what I would like the base coat to be. So I've got some of this tanner matte finished acrylic paint here that we're gonna add to it. So we have this nice consistency of some textured paint here. And I feel like, again, it's in the right color. So we are just going to start to brush this on. So now that I have a really solid base coat on here, I'm gonna see if I can help it dry a little bit with my heat gun. Okay, well I let my jug dry for a little bit here. We're gonna prep our fog juice design. And when I was thinking about doing this, I was like, well, I could make a stencil with vinyl, but I felt like if I was to try to put vinyl on here because it's painted on glass, you'd have a high probability of pulling that paint off. So I decided we're going to use a transfer technique that we've used a couple other times before and we're going to hold it on with just a tiny bit of washi tape and the washi tape is not that sticky so it shouldn't peel up the paint. Um, I may try to just hold it on there while we do it but I feel like it's going to need secured in some fashion. So all we're going to do with this is flip it over and we're going to take our pencil and rub the whole back. The darker you make it the better your transfer will look when you go to scribe it onto your bottle. Okay, so I went back and forth in both directions just to make sure I have a good coating of the pencil lead on here. So then that way when we go to put it on, it will transfer our outlines. Oh, this will stop Jack. 
All right, so now that the top of this is dry enough for us to add some more details, the under layers might take a day or two to fully cure just because it is on glass and it's, you know, a non-porous surface. But the top is nice and dry, so it gives us our great little texture here. So it has a nice, like, sandy terracotta ceramic quality to it. And now we can add some of our metallic paint to give it some of its aging and striations. If you actually look at the one in the movie up close, it actually looks like it has a little bit of a metallic sheen to it. So that's why I decided we'd add some metallic as well. So I have two different colors of metallic paint here. We have a chocolate brown metallic paint, and then we have a Sahara gold. And I feel like the combination of the two should give us some good coloring on here. Okay, so I'm going to actually start with the darker of the two first. So I'm just going to put some in my little glass jar here so we have a nice metallic chocolate brown. And I'm going to kind of go for a dry brush effect. I just want to be able to add some texture on here. And the texture that we added with our paint and the baking soda and all of that is really going to help to give this a really nice textured look. So as you can see, I'm just kind of taking my paint and putting it on and some spots I'm making darker than others and then I'm kind of dragging it through and letting that texture take hold of it and give it some highlights and lowlights. And it's just gonna give us this great aged look that'll look very similar to the one that's in the movie. I got a good layer of distressing on here, and I actually think I wanna add a little bit of black metallic paint to just deepen it up even more. And then we'll go back with a tiny bit of our light metallic paint to add some more highlights. So I've still got some of my brown metallic paint in here, and I'm gonna add some black metallic acrylic paint to it to just deepen it up a little bit. Okay, and that gave us this really deep brown that's got just a tiny hint of black to it too, which I think will be great. So that's gonna end up deepening up some of our textures on here. So I think we got a pretty good distressed look on here. I love that you get the like different tones and highlights with the metallic paint and our base color. And I think it looks pretty similar to Sally's. Now that I have this done, I think we're going to let this dry for a second and then we're going to come back and put on our fog juice text. All right, so I've got our little fog juice text here. And we're going to hold it up to where we think it should go on here. And that looks pretty good. And then I'm going to tape it down with my washi tape, which again is a very, very, very light adhesive. It's, it's even less than painter's tape. So it should just help hold it into place without taking our paint up. And it may not even do that. Once you get it stuck on there, you're then going to take your pencil and you are going to trace the design and you're going to want to press pretty hard. And what that's going to do is it's going to transfer an outline onto our bottle that we can then follow with our marker. Okay. So even if you don't get it exact, you just want to get a rough go of it here. Okay, so when I did mine, because the undercoating wasn't completely dry, it actually kind of carved into my paint and pulled some of it up. However, I can still see the outline of everything. So instead of using a marker, which was I was originally going to do, I actually think I might use a fine brush and the black metallic paint, which isn't going to matter that it carved in. It'll actually make it a little easier.
think that's the best of a bad situation, but at least it's on there. And I think it looks like Sally wrote it on there herself, which I think works. And there you have it, fog juice. This will be a great companion piece to Sally's other potion ingredients that we made a couple years ago, or a nice addition to our potion and prop collection to make along the way. So if you guys like this video, give me the thumbs up. If you haven't subscribed, please do so, and we will catch you guys later. Thanks so much. Thank you.